I'm John McKee, editor of Messianic Apologetics, www.messianicapologetics.net. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for future teachings and updates. Messianic Insider is a podcast offering you something that your local Messianic congregation is usually not set up to provide. Offer a place to discuss critical and very deep issues which affect the future and stability of our faith community. We want to thank you for your regular offerings and support toward our ministry efforts. You can give online at outreachisrael.net forward slash support. Today on Messianic Insider, we begin an ongoing series discussing two very severe issues in today's Messianic movement, the divinity and the messiahship of Yeshua. Now, we're going to be starting out discussing Yeshua's divinity. In no uncertain terms, our ministry, Outreach Israel and Messianic Apologetics, holds to a high Christology. We absolutely believe that Yeshua, the Messiah, is God. And we have many resources available defending that position. It's not as though we're just saying that he's God as some kind of uh, theological dogma. We, have, we can actually back this up with our research and show you how we have come to these conclusions. The divinity of Yeshua is a severe issue across the Messianic plane. It's much easier to discern how in the independent Hebrew or Hebraic roots movement, there are many people who deny Yeshua as God. Uh, but even in Messianic Judaism, there are individuals that you will encounter in congregations and fellowships who they're not so sure whether or not Yeshua is God. And the numbers are on the rise. There is an increasing number of people out there who are denying that Yeshua is God. And how seriously are people in positions of leadership and teaching, how seriously are we taking this problem? I think many people out there don't want to be bothered by it. Many people take the position, well, God's truth is God's truth, and God's truth will always stand, and there's nothing I have to do about it uh, in order to make God's truth stand. That is a very fundamentalist position that might have worked back in the 1970s or the 1980s, but it will not work in the 2020s. Many local congregations, and this includes congregations that I have been involved with over the years, going back to the uh, 1990s, many local congregations don't discuss this issue. Certainly, they don't discuss this issue the way that they should have in terms of what are the people who are attending our Shabbat services, our studies, our fellowship groups? What are they accessing on the internet? What books are they reading? What are they being exposed to? There doesn't tend to be a huge amount of probing of this on the part of not enough Messianic congregational leaders and teachers. Because if they did that, they'd realize, why am I going through this teaching series on Shabbat? We have got to uh, stop this problem before it gets any bigger. Uh, that's not something that you see happening. And I can also say, going to various national Messianic conferences, this issue is not discussed to the extent that it tends uh, that it should be. I'm not here to say that there are not people talking about Yeshua's divinity. There certainly are, but they are not stressing that this is a huge problem among people that we have to see contained. Uh, there's not enough of that the way there should be. So, Messianic Insider, we are going to begin an ongoing series on Yeshua's divinity and later his messiahship. 
What is the number one goal of our ministry, Outreach Israel, Messianic Apologetics? It is to help provide stability. And so as we talk about Yeshua's divinity and messiahship, hopefully we will be able to facilitate more stability. A number of years ago, our ministry released the small book uh, confronting Yeshua's divinity and messiahship. There is a link to this resource in the description. Uh, it's available in paperback as well as ebook. And mainly what this was put together for was to help people who would be unexpectedly broadsided. People who would be attending a Messianic congregation, fellowship, Bible study, what have you. People who have a pretty good handle on the scriptures, who believe rightly that Yeshua is God, certainly that Yeshua is the Messiah, but then, for whatever reason or series of reasons, through whatever circumstances, they are they encounter uh, people out there who say, well, don't you know this, or don't you know that? Are you not aware of this? Are you not aware of that? And it just completely catches them off guard. And what are we to do about this? These are people who go to their Messianic congregational leadership, and they're like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm not even a full-time rabbi. I've got a full-time job on the side. I don't have time to study this. Uh, so we put together Confronting Yeshua's Divinity and Messiahship to help these kinds of people to keep them from jumping off the cliff, uh, as it were. Does it address everything? No, but it does address a significant amount of things that get circulated out there. Messianic congregational leadership is not well equipped to address some of these things and to help people from denying Yeshua as God and, in all, and indeed also denying him as Messiah so we can keep them in the fold and we can see that these issues are addressed. Uh, this is a very severe issue. Uh, in the last days, which we are living in, the scariest end time sign more than any other, because it is actually something that we as the people of God can have some control or influence over, involves the prophesied apostasy. 2 Thessalonians 2, there are going to be people who abandon faith in Yeshua. And it's going to happen in any number of different ways. But one of the ways it will happen, and there is a set pattern that I have seen many, many times. People in the Messianic community begin to doubt whether or not Yeshua is God, often because their local congregation or fellowship isn't talking about it. They begin to doubt whether or not Yeshua is God. They go on the internet. They get all kinds of uh, false information out there. They deny him as God. And then, because, well, I questioned, you know, whether or not he was God, well, let, let me test and see whether or not he's the Messiah. And so then they'll get a hold of Jewish anti-missionary information. And then before long, they've denied Yeshua as the Messiah. And some of these people, at least they're consistent, they then begin to question, well, whether... How do I know that the Hebrew scriptures are accurate and historically reliable? And I've seen people go from denying Yeshua as God to denying Yeshua as Messiah to denying God and becoming atheists. So these are things that today's Messianic community has got to begin to talk about. I'm not going to be presumptuous regarding the timetable on which we find ourselves concerning the end of the age and the second coming. Uh, I don't know what the specific timetable is, but we have entered into a season where all of those issues that we were putting aside for another day, they have to be addressed now. All right, we're going to begin this ongoing series reviewing some of the main issues that arise involving the divinity as well as the messiahship of Yeshua. Our ministry, Outreach Israel, Messianic Apologetics, is here to declare the truth. And we just don't believe in blind truth. We believe in backing things up with well-researched and well-reasoned answers uh, for the things that we see out there. So I don't know how many parts this series is going to be. It's going to be ongoing. Uh, 
certainly we'll have other shows uh, in between uh, different episodes as we're not going to exclusively be addressing this uh, indefinitely, but we are going to be touching on many aspects of Yeshua's divinity and messiahship over multiple weeks. So today, why does the Messiah have to be divine? Uh, have people like me simply you know, bought into Christian dogma, or have we certainly questioned, reevaluated, and tested whether or not the premise that the Messiah has to be divine is one that is truly biblical? Because a lot of people, and I've been accused of this many times on social media, I've had people contact me, well, you are just parroting, you are just going along with the Christian lies you were taught, you know, blah, 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 blah. And almost nobody thinks that, well, maybe you actually have researched this out, you have certainly seen what people defending Yeshua as God have said, people who have said that he's not God have said, and you've come to your own conclusions. Many people who accuse me of just parroting lies or whatever it is, they will not give me the benefit of the doubt thinking that maybe you've actually researched this out a little bit. That's why you've got big fat books uh, in your ministry uh, arsenal. Uh, and, it, and indeed, that's something that's very sad. Many people uh, who have denied Yeshua as God, they're not willing to discuss this in a reasonable uh, and objective way. And they are not willing to consider maybe we've gone a little too far. Uh, so hopefully, uh, for those of you who know this is a problem, you're very disturbed by it, but you don't see your congregational leadership really doing that much about it. For whatever reason, they don't want to be bothered by it. They're acting a little too fundamentalist, or more likely than not, well, those are going to be someone else's problems. Those problems will never reach our congregation or fellowship. Hopefully, this series you will find very, very helpful. Okay, approaching the debate. Why does the Messiah have to be divine? The question of whether or not Yeshua the Messiah is divine God in the flesh, has been a cause of considerable debate and dissension in various periods since his ascension into heaven. The apostolic scriptures record ancient hymns and creeds affirmed about Yeshua by the first century believers themselves, i.e. Philippians 2, 6-11, Colossians 1, 15-20, 1 Timothy 3, 16, some of which may have been formulated to not only make key statements about who he is, but also subvert errant ideas that had circulated in various sectors of the ecclesia. In much of theological study since the first century and ministry of the apostles, we encounter the views of people who strongly believed that Yeshua must be God and that any diversion of believing that he is not God must be viewed as theological heresy. There are also those who have strongly believed that Yeshua was only a human man that he had some kind of special relationship with God and was quite possibly even the Messiah, empowered by God, but was never God in the flesh. Whether Yeshua the Messiah is divine is an old debate. And while there are discussions about what this group of Christian leaders insisted or what that sect did, this is an issue that ultimately tries a reader's loyalty to the biblical text. How medieval Roman Catholic leaders handled those they considered to be heretics, for example, should not be what guides our thoughts about this issue. What should guide our thoughts about this issue is understanding the wide-sweeping biblical ramifications of these have been written so that you may believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. John 20, 31, New American Standard. What matters for our deliberations is whether or not the divinity of Yeshua is a clear teaching of Scripture, that the divinity of Yeshua is something reflected in the testimony of the apostles, and how the divinity of Yeshua is something which affects our salvation. As I approach the issue of whether or not Yeshua is the divine Savior, my reasons for believing in his divinity 
are firmly based within the text of Scripture. From Scripture, we see stated in numerous places that only God can save human beings from their diverse trials and allow his people to enter into his blessed purpose for them. The Lord God explicitly claims that he is the only Savior, derived from the Hebrew verb yasha, of his people. Let me give you a list of references for you to consider here, uh, where it is stated in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that God is the only Savior. Uh, Isaiah 43, 3. Isaiah 43, 11, which explicitly says, I, even I, am the Lord, and there is no Savior besides me. Isaiah 45, 21, uh, which more uh, further says, Declare and set forth your case. Indeed, let them consult together. Who has announced this from of old? Who has long since declared it? It is not I, the Lord, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none except me. Also, Isaiah 49, 26, Isaiah 60, 16, and Hosea 13, 4. These verses from the Tanakh attest to the fact that the Lord, yud heh vav -Heh himself, is the only Savior and Redeemer, as demonstrated by great acts of deliverance and victory for his people. The claim of Isaiah 45, 21, for example, is most exclusive. And there is no God apart from me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none but me. New International Version. The process of being saved from et the eternal punishment to be meted upon sinners directly involves actions performed by God himself. The key to properly dealing with whether or not Yeshua is divine is with how he could possibly offer any person eternal redemption as Savior if he were only a human man. The Apostolic Scriptures, New Testament, surely affirm that Yeshua, the Messiah, is the Savior, the Greek title Soter. The angels proclaimed at Yeshua's birth, For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, Luke 2.11. The Apostle Paul wrote, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Yeshua the Messiah, Philippians 3.20. And he spoke about the redemption which is in Messiah Yeshua, Romans 3.34. He further says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1.7, Colossians 1.14, which is undeniably the activity of salvation. Four times in the epistle of 2 Peter, Yeshua is called our Lord and Savior, 1-1, 1 -1, 2-20, 18 And indeed, there are many other places in the apostolic scriptures where Yeshua the Messiah is unambiguously referred to as the Savior, including John 4-42, Acts 5-31, 13-23, Ephesians 5-23, 2 Timothy 1-10, Titus 1-4, 2, 13, 3, 6, 1 John 4, 14. For some outsiders encountering the testimony of Scripture, there seems to be an issue. If the Lord God says that He is the only Savior and Redeemer of His people, then how can Yeshua the Messiah also be referred to as the one who saves and redeems sinners? Is this not something that can only be done by God alone. The biblical truth of the matter is that a human person being saved, forgiven of his or her sins, and being spiritually regenerated is directly connected to whether or not Yeshua the Messiah is divine. We need to each consider the picture of the ancient Israelites' exodus from Egypt. Any one of us in the Messianic community who has studied the Passover should be fully aware of how the Passover lamb is a type and shadow of Messiah Yeshua, 1 Corinthians 5-7, and that the Passover represents our exodus as believers from slavery to sin to new life in Him. The Passover is a picture of an individual's salvation. 
The Exodus account tells us that after the Lord had swallowed up the Egyptian armies, that the Israelites began singing a song. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will extol him. Exodus 15.2, New American Standard. The Hebrew text says that Yah, the Yehi Li, Le Yeshua, or the Lord has become our Yeshua. Yeshua being the improper noun form of the name Yeshua. This is not the only place where we see God as the Yeshua of his people. Psalm 118, 14, 21 exclaims, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Le Yeshua, I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. Le Yeshua. Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation, Yeshua T. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Le Yeshua. Perhaps most intriguing is Psalm 98, 3. He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. This verse tells us that the world has seen Yeshuat Eloheinu, and that the salvation of God is to have global ramifications. Such salvation extends far beyond deliverance from worldly trials and situations. Okay, all references here are New American Standard. These verses from the Tanakh affirm how God alone is the only source of salvation, redemption, and deliverance from not only peril, but that he is the only steadfast one in whom people can trust and rely. God was the salvation for the ancient Israelites as the Supreme One removed them from their slavery in Egypt, being their salvation, or Yeshua. If we are born-again believers, God has had to surely be Yeshua, or salvation, for us, leading us on an exodus out of the bondage we once had to sin and the forces of darkness and into new life and restored communion with him. Is God our Savior? The conviction that Yeshua the Messiah must be God in the flesh is deeply rooted where the source of one's salvation is found. The source of our salvation is God himself. God himself is the only one who can save and redeem human beings from sin and the realm of death. The psalmist expressed how no man can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. But God will redeem my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me, Selah. Psalm 90, excuse me, 49, 7, 15, New American Standard. If Yeshua were only a human man or mortal, or even a created supernatural being, then could he legitimately have the power to deliver people from the clutches of death and eternal punishment? Revelation 118. It is entirely appropriate for one to conclude that there is no possible way for Yeshua to be the Savior, providing eternal redemption for those who look to him unless he is truly God. Only if Yeshua is divine can he then be our Savior. The Hebrew Tanakh is adamant about the Lord God being the only Savior. And if Yeshua is not the Lord God, a part of the divine identity, then who or what is he? How can Yeshua genuinely be the source of eternal salvation if he is not God? Some have said that Yeshua only acts as the Savior, meaning that he is God's agent in the world, but that he is ultimately not God. Yet, when we look at something as important as the intertextual quote of Isaiah 45, 23 in Philippians 2, 10, it definitely forces us to acknowledge that Yeshua the Son is indeed the Lord, or yod Isaiah 45, 21 to 23 Declare and set forth your case 
Indeed, let them consult together. Who has announced this from of old? Who has long since declared it? Is it not I, the Lord, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior? There is none except me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone forth from my mouth, in righteousness and will not turn back, that to me every knee will bow, every tongue will swear allegiance. And Philippians 2, 9-11 God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Yeshua every knee will bow, Isaiah 45, 23, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Yeshua the Messiah is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Both references here from the New American Standard. The implications of Isaiah 45, 21 to 23, and Philippians 2, 9 to 11, viewed together, are unavoidable. The one God of Israel who has directly insisted that he is the only Savior to which all must turn for deliverance, who specifically says there is no other, Isaiah 45, 22, has actually shared this status with Yeshua. This should not be surprising, as Yeshua is stated to be one existing in the form of God. Philippians 2, 6, American Standard Version. Not only is Yeshua the Messiah, the one to whom all of creation and all created beings, human and supernatural, must give an account to, confessing his supremacy and worshiping him, but the Father and Son definitely coexist as a part of a plural Godhead, with the Son having the same divine identity as his Father. The statement of Isaiah 45, 21 to 23, about God being the exclusive Savior to whom the whole earth must turn and swear allegiance, and Yeshua being the one to whom every knee will likewise bow and every tongue confess, makes it definite that Yeshua the Messiah is Adonai, complete Jewish Bible, and not a mere human master. A word like Isaiah 45, 21 to 23, applied to any mere human agent empowered by God, or some supernatural yet ultimately created agent would immediately invoke an accusation of blasphemy. Yet the Carmen Christi hymn of Philippians 2, 5 to 11 is widely believed by conservative expositors to be a very early form of liturgy used by the body of Messiah, representing a high Christology of Yeshua being integrated into the divine identity which the Apostle Paul incorporated into his letter. Whether or not Yeshua the Messiah is God is indeed a salvation issue. None of us as limited human beings may fully understand all of the complexities of Yeshua's divinity, his pre-existence of creation, and his coexistence with the Father. But we must acknowledge a divine Redeemer in order to be forgiven of our sins and be saved from eternal punishment. We need to make sure that if we indeed must profess that Yeshua is Lord, it is those who have received the eternal salvation he offers, and not the condemned who will have to acknowledge him at the great white throne judgment before their final sentencing. If you all found this content enjoyable and useful, please be sure to drop a thumbs up for this teaching. As always, we thank you for your continued support of our ministry's efforts. God bless and shalom, and we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, be sure to check us out at www.messianicapologetics.net.